Ever asked yourself how we have so many drugs available for various diseases? Combinatorial chemistry might just be the answer. In the vast and intricate world of science, combinatorial chemistry is a star that shines bright. This ingenious concept is a powerful tool that has revolutionized the field of drug discovery and beyond, playing a crucial role in the modern world. But what is combinatorial chemistry, you might ask? At its core, it's a technique used in medicinal chemistry where a vast number of compounds are synthesized by combining sets of building blocks. Imagine a puzzle where you have a multitude of pieces, each one unique, combinatorial. Chemistry is like rearranging these pieces in every possible combination, creating an extensive library of new molecules. This technique is not just about creating a variety of compounds, but also about increasing the speed at which these compounds can be made. In the realm of drug discovery, time is of the essence. With diseases evolving rapidly, the need for new drugs is unending. Combinatorial chemistry helps accelerate this process, making it an indispensable tool in the fight against disease. Beyond drug discovery, the applications of combinatorial chemistry are far-reaching. It's used in material science to create new materials, in environmental science to develop novel catalysts, and even in the food industry to create new flavors. It's like having a magic wand that can create a myriad of new substances, each with the potential to make a significant impact. The beauty of combinatorial chemistry lies in its simplicity and its power. It's like a master key that can unlock countless doors, opening up a world of possibilities. It's a testament to human ingenuity, our ability to harness the power of nature and use it to our advantage. So intrigued by how combinatorial chemistry is shaping our world, let's dive into its history. Combinatorial chemistry, a relatively new field, emerged in the late 20th century. But how did this innovative branch of science come into existence? Let's take a quick look back in time. In the early 1980s, a revolutionary concept was born in the laboratories of Dr. Mario Geisen. Dr. Geisen developed a method for simultaneously synthesizing many different peptides on pins. This marked the beginning of what we now know as combinatorial chemistry. Fast forward to the 1990s, the term combinatorial chemistry was coined by a biochemist named Stephen Fodor. Fodor and his team at Affimax developed a technique for parallel synthesis, which allowed for the production of thousands of compounds at once. This method was a game changer, enabling scientists to accelerate the drug discovery process. But the evolution of combinatorial chemistry didn't stop there. As the new millennium dawned, the focus shifted from quantity to quality. Scientists began to realize that creating thousands of compounds wasn't enough. They needed a way to quickly identify the most promising candidates. This led to the development of high-throughput screening techniques, a critical component of today's combinatorial chemistry. Throughout this journey, there has been a significant shift from traditional methods to combinatorial methods. Traditional methods involve the synthesis of one compound at a time, a laborious and time-consuming process. Combinatorial chemistry, on the other hand, allowed for the simultaneous synthesis of a large number of compounds, revolutionizing the field of drug discovery. This shift wouldn't have been possible without the pioneers who pushed the boundaries of what was possible. Scientists like Dr. Mario Geisen and Stephen Fodor who dared to think differently and challenge the status quo. From its humble beginnings, combinatorial chemistry has grown into an indispensable tool in the world of science, particularly in the field of pharmaceutical research. But how does it work? It all starts with linkers and solid supports. Linkers and solid supports, they're the unsung heroes of combinatorial chemistry. In the world of combinatorial chemistry, these two components play a fundamental role often going unnoticed while facilitating the creation of the vast libraries of compounds that are the hallmark of this discipline. Let's delve into their function. Imagine the linkers as a kind of molecular scaffolding. These chemical compounds provide a point of attachment for the initial building blocks of our molecular library. They're the unsung heroes, offering a platform from which our chemical structures can grow and evolve. Now meet the solid supports. Think of them as the stage upon which the drama of combinatorial chemistry unfolds. 
These insoluble materials offer a physical platform for the reactions to take place. They anchor our linkers and in turn our evolving compounds, providing a steady base in the midst of a dynamic and fluid process. They're the unchanging foundation amidst a swirling sea of chemical creativity. Together, linkers and solid supports create an environment where combinatorial chemistry can flourish. They facilitate the process of combinatorial synthesis, enabling the creation, modification, and screening of large libraries of compounds efficiently and with unprecedented speed. With a solid base in place, it's time to explore the techniques that bring combinatorial chemistry to life. Mix and split parallel synthesis sounds like dance moves, right? They're actually key techniques in combinatorial chemistry. Let's take a closer look at these fascinating techniques. First up, we have the mix and split technique. Imagine you're at a party and you've got a variety of different snacks. You start by mixing all the snacks together, then you split them up into smaller bowls and then you add a different dip to each bowl. That's essentially what the mix and split technique does in combinatorial chemistry. It mixes together different chemical compounds, splits them up, and then introduces a new compound to each group. The result, a vast array of new diverse compounds, but it's not all party and snacks. The mix and split technique has its drawbacks. The main one is that it's a sequential process, meaning it can be time consuming. And while it's great for creating diversity, tracking the history of each compound can be a daunting task. Now, let's switch gears to the parallel synthesis technique. If mix and split was a party, parallel synthesis is more like an assembly line. In this technique, different compounds are synthesized in parallel, in individual reaction vessels. It's less about mixing and more about producing large quantities of specific compounds quickly and efficiently. The advantage of parallel synthesis is its high throughput. You can produce a large number of compounds in a shorter time compared to the mix and split technique, but it's not without its challenges. The need for individual reaction vessels means that it requires more resources and can be more costly. It's important to remember that these techniques are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they are often used together in what's known as a hybrid approach. This allows for the benefits of both techniques to be utilized, maximizing both the diversity and the quantity of compounds that can be produced. In essence, these techniques are the cornerstone of combinatorial chemistry. They allow us to create vast libraries of compounds, opening up a world of possibilities in drug discovery and material science. By using these techniques, chemists can quickly identify potential new drugs or materials and speed up the development process. These techniques have revolutionized the way we approach chemistry, but where do we see their impact? Combinatorial chemistry isn't just a concept, it's a game changer in various fields. The most significant application of this fascinating science is in the realm of drug discovery. Combinatorial chemistry allows the synthesis of a large number of compounds in a single process, generating libraries of molecules for screening. This approach has revolutionized the pharmaceutical industry accelerating the pace of drug discovery and development. It has made it possible to quickly identify potential drug candidates, reducing the time and cost involved in bringing new medicines to market, but the applications of combinatorial chemistry extend beyond pharmaceuticals. In materials science, it's used to create and test new materials with a wide range of properties. By generating large libraries of materials and rapidly screening them for desired properties, researchers can identify promising candidates for further development much more quickly than with traditional methods. This can lead to the discovery of new materials with unique properties, from high-strength alloys to novel polymers. Combinatorial chemistry also finds use in other areas like environmental science, where it aids in the creation of new catalysts for pollution control, and in the food industry, where it helps in flavor and fragrance development. The ability to generate and test large numbers of compounds quickly and efficiently is a powerful tool in these and many other fields. Moreover, combinatorial chemistry is playing a pivotal role in the development of nanotechnology. It's being used to design and synthesize new nanomaterials with tailored properties, opening up exciting possibilities in areas like electronics, energy storage, and medicine. In essence, 
combinatorial chemistry is a driving force behind countless innovations. By enabling the rapid generation and screening of large libraries of compounds, it's helping to speed up the pace of discovery, improve efficiency, and open up new frontiers in science and technology. So, combinatorial chemistry is not just chemistry, it's the future.